Hello, everyone. My name is Rebecca Morton. My pronouns are she, her. I'm the artist and studio manager at, here at Baltimore Clayworks. We are thrilled that you all have joined us. I would like to acknowledge that I'm joining from my office located on Piscataway and Susquehannock land, currently known as Baltimore, Maryland. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our virtual studio tour given today by Patrick Bell. He is our 2022 to 23 Warmina Salter Fellow. For more information about our artist talks, please visit our virtual library at baltimoreclayworks.org. And for today's events, you can feel free to submit your questions in the chat box. And after Patrick does his studio tour, we will have a q and I'll turn it over to Patrick. All right, thank you, um, Rebecca. Like she said, my name is Patrick Bell. I'm the uh, Lormina Salter here, Lormina Salter Fellow here from uh, 2022 to 2023. So um, in August, I'll be sort of wrapping up that fellowship point. And with that, I'm going to have a solo show over in the main gallery near Baltimore Clayworks uh, on July 8th. So um, that's something that I've been really working hard towards lately. Um, I also got a show just about a month um, in uh, at Penn State um, uh, on the main campus in about a month, uh, I think it's about the 26th of May. Um, so a lot of things that are going on in my studio, um, uh, not mentioning you know some fun, exciting things hopefully coming up in um, the fall of this year. And so I'm really excited to you know talk a little bit about what's going on, give you a little bit of tour of um, you know, what I have working here. So. A little bit about me. Um, I was born in Baltimore, um, but we moved away, me and my family, about three or four. Um, we moved to Connecticut for my father to study prosthetics and orthotics, and then we moved um, to Pittsburgh for him to get a job in the field. And so uh, my mother and father, um, both um, uh, physical therapists, and so uh, you know, I grew up with this, um, you know, sort of broadly speaking, interest in the body, interested in the sort of mechanics of the body, and surrounded by um, that kind of attitude. My father in particular, um, he didn't end up uh, pursuing orthotics and prosthetics, but um, actually you know, sculpting and applying those things. Uh, and so working with his hands um, is something he's really passionate about. Um, and I think that's you know, something that comes through in my work. Um, so uh, my work is um, a lot about the body, but uh, much more the internal body. So um, you know, I don't know, I certainly call it figurative work. There's some uh, you know, torsos and bodies in my work, but generally uh, speaking, the, the internal body is much more represented in the work that I do. Um, more lately, I've been using hands and fingers as these kind of uh, abstracted representations of um, some kind of external body or some kind of external um, source exploring the internal body. Um, so, you know, you'll see quite a bit of that around me today, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so a uh, sort of a core component of my work is this dichotomy of these ideas of mental problems, physical problems, these illnesses, ailments, um, um, and the kind of um, uh, kind of critiquing that dichotomy, pushing back against that idea that um, you know they are sort of separate, that mental problems don't affect us physically, and and uh, vice versa. Um, and so uh, you see a lot of these kind of moments of tension, moments of uh, sort of unrest in my work, um, and uh, there's a number of ways that uh, I'm going to talk about that today. So um, a lot of fingers in my studio lately, um, the fingers are sort of coming from a number of different places, um, you know, like biting my fingers, biting your nails, this is something that, um, you know, I, I do, other people do, and I think it's a pretty um, sort of direct manifestation of that kind of uh, um, anxiety, those sort of uh, um, concerns that manifest themselves physically, of course. More recently in my life, um, I've been exploring these themes of um, sexuality, intimacy, things that um, have been, you know, relatively uh, foreign in my life up until recent points. And so you'll find some of these moments in my studio that um, are uh, these sort of interactive moments, these moments that um, you know have these kind of sexual or intimate undertones, um, but again are, are really exploratory, are really ambiguous. Um, you know, some of them are maybe uh, maybe seem a little bit more direct than others, but um, oftentimes you'll see again these hands that um, you know for me they exist more as these kind of representations of this, let's say, external figure, this other um, exploring something. So uh, whether that's uh, you know. Sort of, sort of emotional moments or these more um, chaotic sort of 
uh, um, tumultuous sort of internal scenes, um, more represented by like organs, let's say, than uh, particular sections of the external body. Um, a lot of that's been coming up in my work um, lately. As I mentioned, fingers, of course, um, again, that sort of point of, you know, for me and, and lots of other people, sort of intersection between, uh, you know, these anxieties, these things that we often think about as internal, as sort of mental, for lack of a better term, uh, you know, as if there is not any kind of uh, you know, physical side effect. Um, and so I've been really um, obsessed, for lack of a better term, with these fingers lately. Um, for the shows that I've been working on, um, I'm really thinking, you know, in the last couple of weeks about activating the wall space. Um, you know, as a sculptor, uh, oftentimes my work exists sort of well, on pedestals or, you know, as these sort of singular standing objects. So I've got a couple ideas in the studio, um, again, working with activating spaces in a more dynamic way. Um, some other pieces I've been working on are, uh, you know, this one in particular deals with the lungs. Um, I was a long time smoker until recently. And so, you know, also thinking about, again, um, you know, the damage that we do physically to ourselves uh, with these coping mechanisms, um, uh, you know, uh, many different forms that they come in. Uh, this is a hanging piece that has some um, other mixed media components left to be worked in. Um, but of course, you know, part of the, the process of clay is, is there is firing. So I've got quite a bit of bisque firing here to do before I explore some more of those. Um, you can see up here some of my older work, some in-progress works. The piece over there is actually a combination of um, ceramic and paper mache. So I've been playing with um, uh, paper mache, um, joint compound, plaster, different um, uh, elements that I think can just add to um, ceramic work in ways that, you know, maybe that um, uh, singular process can't do by itself. This piece over here um, is a little bit reminiscent of some work that I was finishing towards the end of grad school. So um, I graduated in 2020, this time where, um, you know, the world really started thinking about health, uh, I think, a lot more and in a very sort of um, uh, more intense way. I was making these um, sort of torso-sized pieces made of, you know, limbs, fingers, arms, elbows, um, these joints that um, oftentimes, like earlier on, they were very intestinal um, because, you know, gastrointestinal sort of um, responses to anxiety are pretty common and, and something that I experience as well. Um, and they've, you know, the fingers have come in a little bit more, but um, oftentimes, again, representing these bodies or representing uh, figures, people, uh, not as, you know, sort of fully fleshed out torsos or bodies, um, but, you know, using that sort of scale uh, um, as a way of, again, being the sort of stand-in for a being, somebody, whether it's myself or others, um, and creating them these sort of combinations of elements, whether it you know, be more intestinal or finger-like uh, recently. Um, I had a couple of um, uh, brain-influenced pieces or pieces more heavily influenced by the brain coming out of grad school and, and towards the end of grad school, which, um, you know, has been coming a little bit more towards the forefront of my thought lately. Um, in 2015, I think I had brain surgery, um, uh, which was, you know, one of the only times I'd really found myself in the hospital with something, you know, sort of more uh, dramatic. And so, um, uh, you know, certainly that was a time of anxiety, confusion internally and externally for me. Um, and I've been coming back a little bit to, you know, reminisce on those kind of ideas in some of my work in the studio. Um, you can see uh, a lot of my glaze testing in the background, you know, I try to keep that to a minimum, but, um, uh, you know, these pinks and these, these like, deeper crawl glazes that I've been using, uh, I'm really trying to find the parts of, um, uh, you know, ceramics that um, take advantage of the medium. I often tell my students, like, you know, when they're thinking about glazing or surfacing work, but take advantage of this advantages of the choices you made. So, um, you know, if you make something really heavily textured, don't use a really thick blaze that'll cover it or vice versa. Um, and then that way of thinking, you know, I'm really trying to remind myself constantly, like, what is it about ceramics? What is it about clay that um, is offered to me that I can't really find in other mediums? And so, um, you know, while I am searching for those sort of non-clay mediums that can, can offer me a little bit of diversity, um, this glaze testing in the background and, and some of these glazes that I use, some of these thicker crawl glazes, a really sort of, um, you know, again, that, that pursuit of these surfaces, these aesthetics that um, you know, I can't find otherwise or I can't get otherwise. Um, uh, I do, a lot of my work nowadays is painted as well, so I've been using a combination of um, paint and underglaze, um, mostly paint, uh, a little bit of underglaze perhaps to um, like offset the, um, the background of some of these glaze surfaces. Um, but this is, um, 
glaze, under glaze, paint with lacquer. I've been using a lot of um, lacquers lately. Um, a lot of the hands, the hand up there painted. There's some work uh, over here that also uses a lot of paint. So um, that's been a real benefit as well. Um, you know, working in the studio too. Um, people like uh, Clarissa Pazone, who I'm doing her talk in here, I think like next week. Um, she's really great at uh, exploring these sort of cold surfaces, as we refer to them, or these you know post-firing surfaces. Um, and so that's been something um, you know, really fun for me to explore in this studio. Um, so uh, yeah, looking, you know, there's a little bit of inlay in this piece. Um, this piece is just some really light painting, sort of working on the transitions of the glaze that I'm using. Um, and I have, you know, again, quite a few of these wall pieces in the process. So there's maybe like a dozen of these um, in total. Um, there's a few, you know, all around the studio. Um, they're going to be working with um, some felt, some other material that um, right now I'm really in sort of exploratory phases of. Um, but again, really looking forward to showing all this work, really looking forward to um, having a couple opportunities this year. Uh, like I said, in about uh, a month, I'll be showing some of this work uh, over at Penn State. A few months after that, I'll be showing across the street. And then I've got some um, fun ideas in the works for spring um, coming forward. Um, some pots are up here. I'm not always you know, deep in the pottery game, but um, and Zika was recent, uh, recently happened, and so uh, I've got quite a few pots that um, are also going to be for sale over in the gallery soon. I've also, if you're local, got some uh, pieces, a sculpture, and a couple pots over in the Community Through Fire show right now. Um, there's a wood fire show over in our main gallery, um, actually in our main and solo galleries, um, which is really great, and I encourage anybody who hasn't seen those already um, to do so if you can, if you're local. Um, but again, uh, lots and lots of uh, different things going on in the studio right now. It's, it's pretty chaotic and you do you know, get that process of working through the bisque, um, working through those glazed surfaces. Uh, um, you know, all of this is sort of coming up quickly, which is good. It's really um, enjoyable to be in the studio. I also um, teach, I teach here. Um, I teach art history and two-dimensional design at uh, the Community College of Baltimore County. So, you know, I'm balancing quite a few things at once, but um, being able to spend a lot of uh, time in the studio uh, as it gets nicer weather, I'm really starting to enjoy, um, you know, working with that uh, uh, you know, work-life balance that we all have to deal with. Um, so, you know, uh, the work in uh, Penn State's going to be a little bit earlier, sort of um, like 2020 to 2023. Um, and then the work across the street is going to be uh, more recent, so 2022, 2023. Um, and I'm really excited to, uh, there will be some promo going out for that soon, so uh, keep me in mind on uh, Instagram or um, uh, I know um, uh, Baltimore Clay will be posting a little bit about that uh, solo show in not too long. Um, Instagram is Pat Bell Art, and you can catch me at Patrick Ryan Bell, uh, dot com to see some of my newer work um, on there. But, um, uh, like I said, really excited to um, get all of these new ideas out into the public. I'm really, really excited um, for all of these upcoming chances to show, um, you know, because so often that, um, you know, this work, it's really fun, it's really great, but, um, you know, for it to happen in a vacuum, for this work to sort of be, like, stored and put away, you know, it's always a little heartbreaking, and so um, uh, I'm really looking forward, like I said, to all of these new opportunities. Um, so yeah, just to highlight a couple pieces, like I said, I've got this um, uh, new lung-based piece, thinking again about um, you know, the damages, the pieces, the uh, 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 coping mechanisms that we've had. A couple of these more sort of um, intimate pieces, you know, some of them maybe a little bit more um, uh, directly influential than others. Um, but like I said, I've uh, been really thinking about this kind of um, sense of intimacy a lot more lately. I, I had a talk a couple months ago where um, you know, there's this idea of or this, this cliche of like, um, you can't you know, love somebody else until you love yourself. I think there's also kind of an interesting parallel to that and like understanding another person's body um, or needing to sort of understand your own body before you can understand another person's body. Um, and so these are all ideas that, uh, you know, in the last like six to eight months, have been really, you know, going through my head, um, trying to be somebody that's, um, you know, really considerate, not just of myself, but um, the person, the people, um, that I share a lot of time with, that I'm really sort of uh, um, more intimately engaged with, um, um, you know, whether that be platonic or otherwise. Um, and so, again, you can see uh, really, you know, my life in a sort of, um, hopefully, a honest sort of naked way, uh, coming out pretty directly in the work, 
you know, I try try to keep myself something of an open book. Um, you know, part of being in the studio is really nice because um, you know, there's always people coming and asking questions and people to talk about, um, and so or people to talk to my work about, um, and so you know this kind of exercise of thinking, talking, um, and working through all of these pieces and these ideas that are sort of going on in my life, um, something that I'm you know, really grateful to be able to to do and have the opportunity to do. Um, you know, part of that, of course, uh, uh, provided by Baltimore Clayworks being able to have this beautiful studio that you can see here, um, where I spend just as much time as I possibly can in. Um, but yeah, I think that you know that talks about a lot of the work that's going into my studio lately. This is my most recent piece that um, hopefully I'll wrap up today with a couple more of these um, uh, fingers. I've got some uh, resin casting that I've got in the uh, in the works right now that's very much um, sort of in progress. Again, in addition to um, some of that more uh, paper mache mixed media work that um, you know exploring has been really exciting lately. Um, you know, getting my my head around these ceramic pieces oftentimes feels a lot easier, and there's a lot more sort of um, uh, uh, you know un unsure or unknown territory with these mixed media works. But um, there's a number of other kinds of ideas that um, I'm really happy to be able to explore in this space, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to you know again sharing with you all. In the coming months, um, like I said, um, recent works on my website, which is linked on Baltimore Clayworks, uh, um, patrickryanbell.com, and you can always see the most recent things that I'm working on uh, at Pat Bell Art on Instagram. I try to keep that pretty active uh, and keep my studio processes uh, pretty uh, available to everybody on there. So, um, with that being said, I think you know we're right at about a good time. If anybody has any questions, um, I'd love to field some and see what uh, thoughts or concerns anybody has about what they've seen today.